Well, good morning. It's great to be here. I got up at the crack of dawn to be here. Uh, I just really enjoyed that dialogue with our distinguished Lieutenant Governor. Uh, you don't understand how lucky you are today to have some really key policymakers here to tell you what's going on so that you can find your role in how we make the world better. Obviously, um, climate change is the most important challenge we have before us. I think it's very urgent. It's a problem at the local level, it's a problem at the state level, it's a problem at the national level, and of course, it's an, it's an international problem. And you know, the good news is that I think California is doing an amazing amount of things to lead in this area and to try to focus attention on it. Um, our governor, Schwarzenegger, and our state legislature have really led the way on climate change. As Go Governor Schwarzenegger put it, he said, the debate is over, the science is in, and the time to act is now. And uh, you know, they've put their money where their mouth is. The governor and the state legislature have passed Assembly Bill 32, which has been mentioned, and of course that's a landmark climate change bill. The bill calls for a reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions of the state to 1990 levels by the year 2020. And the governor has further called for a further reduction to an 80% below 1990 emissions level by the year 2050. Now unfortunately, since 1990, California's greenhouse gas emissions have increased 17%. In fact, our greenhouse gas emissions continue to grow because California's economy is growing. Thus, you have to understand that meeting the climate change goals is an extremely challenging goal. So over at the California Public Utilities Commission, where I work, we are crafting regulatory policies right now to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the sectors that we regulate, which include electricity, natural gas. Uh, we also regulate water and telecom. Now, I, I come to these energy issues from a background in telecommunications. Uh, I was a commissioner of the Federal Communication Commissions in the mid 90s under President Clinton. And um, during my tenure at the FCC, we were dealing with the Telecom Act of 96. And what that Telecom Act of 96 did is it was recognizing the massive changes in the telecom and information sectors that were wrought by things like the invention of the internet, wireless phones, satellite communication systems, digital television. And so in that context, we had technology driving changes in how people lived and worked in the communications area. Now I see today's issue of climate change driving a similar technological revolution in the energy world. And so I expect to see in my lifetime, and I'm 48, highly efficient homes and office buildings that will produce as much energy as they use in a year. I expect to see new forms of alternate energy, which would include renewable energy from solar, wind, geothermal, and other sources. I expect to see new energy meters in your homes that will give a consumer much more information about the energy they're using, how much it costs, so that they have more control over their energy usage. I expect to see smart appliances that a consumer can pre-program to respond to real-time energy prices so that the consumer, again, can choose to reduce energy and save money and help the Earth. I also expect to see clean green cars running on alternative fuels. Uh, maybe they might plug into your garage so they can charge up at night. I also expect to see a smarter electric grid that's going to tie it all together and can anticipate power outages before they happen. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of these areas in detail. Well, um, here at the SoCal Building Expo, it seems like the perfect place to talk about a major initiative that we're working on at the PUC called energy efficiency. Energy efficiency encompasses things like building standards, which reduce energy usage in buildings. So um, examples would be energy efficient lighting. It would mean um, lights that automatically turn off if nobody's around. 
It also includes things like appliance standards, which reduce energy usage by your washer dryer, your fridge. And see, the, the whole point behind energy efficiency is if we don't use so much energy, then we don't have to build so many power plants, which are bad on the environment, right? So um, you should know that here in California, we are the nation's leaders in energy efficiency. Along with the California Energy Commission, the PUC has put in place policies increasing the use of energy efficient technologies like compact fluorescent light bulbs, the little twirly light bulbs, and Energy Star appliances, which use less energy. And just last week, um, the Energy Commission put out new building standards for new construction. And they're very significant. Um, you should take a look at them because they will have a significant impact. Last fall, the PUC also put out some special initiatives that I thought might be of interest to the building community. All new residential construction in California will be zero net energy by 2020, and new commercial construction will follow by 2030. Zero net energy generally means that a house or an office building will generate as much energy as it uses over a year. Also, uh, the PUC put in place a new initiative having to do with the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning industry. We are reshaping them to improve significantly the energy efficiency of those systems. These are challenging initiatives for the building industry, don't get me wrong, but I know that they can do it. Now let's move on to the renewable energy area. Uh, there the PUC is advocating less reliance on fossil fuels um, used by the energy utilities, and instead we're encouraging them okay, we're requiring them, to switch to renewable energy sources like wind, solar, geothermal, and even ocean waves. So uh, the PUC is implementing what we call the Renewable Portfolio Standard, and that's a law that requires the state electric utilities to provide 20% of their electricity from renewable energy sources by 2010. Well, this, frankly, is a very big challenge for the utilities because the state needs to build new transmission facilities to bring the renewable energy from the places it's actually generated. So think hot deserts, think uh, windy places up in hills. We've got to take that renewable energy and bring it down into the places where people need the electricity. So think urban centers. And we have to build the transmission lines to do that. Transmission lines are very difficult to build. They're time consuming. There are many environmental uh, approvals that need to be obtained and many other siting issues. In addition, um, Dr. Clark talked about uh, the first day that I went to work as a PUC commissioner in early 06. Um, the PUC has been implementing the California Solar Initiative, which I still refer to as the Million Solar Roof Program. Um, I was sworn in at 8.30 in the morning as a PUC commissioner and at 10 o'clock I was the swing vote, apparently, uh, unbeknownst to anybody until that moment, uh, on the California Solar Initiative. Uh, and a few hours later, I found myself at this rally over at the City Hall of San Francisco, standing next to Mayor Gavin Newsom and about 500 cheering solar enthusiasts from across the nation uh, making a speech about what a great day it was. I probably should have just quit that day and I would have had a very short but successful PUC career. Well, let's go back to the solar initiative. Um, so essentially, over the next 10 years, we're going to be putting in literally hundreds of thousands of small solar roofs on both residences and office buildings throughout the state. And the PUC has been working on the incentive program to do that. Um, it's really been a key catalyst for the solar industry uh, because whatever California does, you know, everybody follows. So this has been a huge boost for the solar industry, but I do share Lieutenant Governor Garamendi's concern about the federal uh, law. You know, we need to extend that tax credit. The PUC has been lobbying uh, the California representatives, and I urge you to also.